It's a little, little better uh, welcome this time to D.C. than there was last fall. Uh, President Garvey, uh, Cardinal Whirl, uh, Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. It is a real honor to be here. To the family, friends, and supporters of these graduates, thank you for your investment in their lives. And finally, to the graduating class of 2014, congratulations on a remarkable accomplishment. Although I had been on ESPN and many other national TV sports broadcasts throughout my career, my mother once told me when I appeared on EWTN's Life on the Rock that I had really made it to the big time. <laughs> now with this opportunity to be here and be a part of this year's commencement exercises at the Catholic University of America, I've really arrived. What makes it even more special is, is being here on the steps of the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. I was born on December 8th, the fe Feast of the Immaculate Conception, so it truly is very, very special to be here. I want to share a Latin phrase with you that is very special to me and that I think we all can and should apply to our everyday lives. I felt so strongly about this phrase, we, we adopted it as a team. We had it put on t-shirts and we had it on the walls throughout our practice facility. It is a Latin phrase, nunc cepi, now I begin. In our prayer, in our habits, in our relationships, in our profession, it is applicable to everything. Nunc cepi, now I begin. Whether you made a bad grade or didn't do so well in a project, like we all did at some point throughout our years in college, you must begin again. Y'all began again. When I've had a bad play or a good play, when I've thrown a touchdown or an interception, I must begin again. Nunc Chepi. It certainly applies to you graduates who are now beginning the next chapter in your lives. You now begin, but this is ongoing. You begin again and again and again. You never give up. Nunc Chepi. It's spelled N-U-N-C-C-O-E-P-I. And I know I can't quite put the Latin twang on it. It's more of an Alabama twang, but it gets the job done. My teammates often tease me about that. Nunc Chepi, they're like, that sounds real Latin to me, but. <laughs> but remember that phrase and reflect on it as, as I continue. It wasn't too long ago, well, it, it was about a decade ago that, that I was sitting in your seat. I had mixed emotions. I was somewhat somber leaving great experiences and great relationships, but I was also eager to face the next challenge. I wasn't certain what the future held or where I would be headed, but I was certain of what mattered most to me. I knew as long as I stayed focused on my priorities, I would be ready for life's ups and downs. What are your priorities? What is the foundation on which you'll build your future? Mine are very simple, faith, family, and football in that order. You may find this hard to believe, but I'm pretty passionate about football. I know I hide it very well on Sunday afternoons. I'm obviously kidding. But of course I'm passionate about football. It's been much more than a game to me. It's meant so much to me. F football means time with my dad. I grew up around my dad's football team. He was the high school coach in town. I was his water boy. I was the ball boy. And I longed for the time when I would get to be his quarterback. What an experience that was. We share so many great memories together. Even now, I call him almost daily to analyze the previous game, discuss the next opponent, or, or just simply talk ball. He and I can and do talk about everything, but there's something special about talking football with my dad. Football also means camaraderie. The fans, the touchdowns, making the highlights on SportsCenter, that's all fun stuff, but it's the bus rides and the locker room in the practice field, in the weight room, and the time spent with my teammates and coaches that are most enjoyable. It's setting team goals, facing the obstacles shoulder to shoulder, and climbing that mountain together. It's that journey with your, with your buddies to try to get to the top of that mountain that makes winning so special. Football means preparation, 
hard work and achievement, pursuing excellence and striving to get better. It's the guts to overcome failures, the resolve to never give up, and the thrill of winning. Are y'all fired up yet? (laughs) I realize everybody's not quite as passionate about football as I am. But class of 2014, what are you passionate about? What excites you? What fires you up? What is your football? Life is too short to just go through the motions. Discover your passion, if you haven't already, and do it to the best of your ability. Nuke Chepi. Another priority of mine is my family. I've already mentioned my dad. I was blessed with a loving, supportive mom and dad who taught me the value of family. I've now been married to my wonderful wife, Tiffany, 13 years, and as mentioned, we have seven beautiful children, five girls and two boys. We're outnumbered big time. (laughs) There's no shortage of entertainment in our house, to say the least, but what a blessing each and every one of them are. When I come home from a road game, win or lose, it's not cameras and microphones and autographs and photos or jeers and heckling. It's bikes and scooters and sidewalk chalk and bats and balls strode all over the driveway. But win or lose, those seven children, my wife loved me for being dad and husband. My family keeps it all in perspective. Although I will say, as my oldest son, he's six now, as he gets a little older, it's getting a little tougher to get by on a, when I have a bad game. He asked me recently, over the past couple years, when I've had a bad interception or two, Dad, why did you throw it right to that guy? <laughs> I didn't want to, son, I promise you. People often ask me about my hobbies, golf, fishing, whatever. My my favorite hobbies are playing with the kids in the yard, endless hours of wiffle ball, swimming in the pool, me trying to flip them off of the raft, walks to the park, all nine of us together. That's what I love to do. Tiffany and I work hard to cultivate a fun culture of morality, encouragement, and unconditional love, and the freedom to fail. You protect the things you value by preparing praying, planning, setting goals, working hard, and being intentional, leaving nothing to chance. Tiffany always tells me as I walk out the door to head to the stadium after we say one Hail Mary together, do your best and let God do the rest. And that's all any of us can do. As a quarterback, I prepare and plan very meticulously to achieve my football goals, so how much more should Tiffany and I prepare and plan to achieve our family goals? Class of 2014, what is valuable to you? Avoid regret that comes with chance, identify what is valuable to you, and then prepare and plan to protect it. Nunc Chepi. Lastly, I can't tell you about my priorities, my foundation, what defines me without telling you about my faith, my Catholic faith. C.S. Lewis said this about Christianity. Christianity, if false, is of no importance, and if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. My faith is the most important thing in my life. I was an altar boy as a child. I often would go back to the back room and get dressed, hoping the other boys wouldn't show up, even when I wasn't on the schedule. And because I wanted to be up there and serve every Sunday, I I cherish that opportunity to be that close and involved in the celebration of the Eucharist. The one basic fundamental of our faith that was instilled in me as a young boy from my parents was to never miss Mass on Sundays. This was so instilled and lived out by my family as I was growing up that when I got to college and was officially on my own, missing Mass was not an option. My faith truly became my own during this time. I was married in college. We had our oldest daughter in college and started to build our family centered on Christ and our Catholic faith. We, we strive to raise our children to know, love, and serve God. Staying in the state of grace and receiving the sacraments allows us, all of us, to better live out our faith. And no matter where one is on his or her faith journey here today, it's always fitting to say, Nunc Chepi. In addition to having priorities set, there are other traits that help us grow as people in our spiritual lives and our professional careers, many of which I could mention and many that you may have heard before. But there are two I want to share with you 
that I've experienced and dealt with over the past few years. The first is don't worry. Don't worry. There were so many ups and downs for me personally in the 2010, 11, and 12 football seasons. I had many struggles, and I began to worry. When would a bad play happen again? Would we ever make the playoffs again? Will I continue to have turnover problems? As these bad thoughts and worries crept in, I began to read and pray and meditate on this text from the Imitations of Christ book. I'm paraphrasing here. What good is anxiety about the future? Does it bring you anything but trouble upon trouble? It is foolish and useless to be either grieved or happy about future things, which perhaps may never happen. But it is human to be deluded by such imaginations and the sign of a weak soul to be led on by suggestions of the enemy. For he does not care whether he consumes you by love of the present or fear of the future. Let not your heart be troubled or be afraid. Believe in me and trust in my mercy. Don't worry. The second, be thankful. In January of 2013, our oldest son, who was five years old at the time, was diagnosed with type one diabetes. Immediately, anguish and sadness and frustration and all kinds of emotions emerge, and as a family, as a mom and a dad, we felt like it was the end of the world. How would he adjust? What does this mean? Can we handle this? How hard is it gonna be? And after walking in and out of Children's Hospital and seeing other children and parents dealing with things much more severe, we over time became so grateful and thankful. Not happy that our son would have to deal with this for the rest of his life, but we all have our crosses to bear. And with, with God's grace, he strengthens us to carry those. I was, I was told that, you know, not all the crosses or problems that we have are the same. But if we could all see everyone else's problems, if we could all throw all our problems out here in a big pile today, we would probably just want to have ours back. And that's so true. Through this life-changing health issue and throughout the struggling seasons, as a family and personally, I have much to be thankful for. We all do. This text I read many times also from the Imitations of Christ. Be thankful for the least benefit and you will be worthy to receive greater. Let the least be received as the greatest and things that are little be to you as a special gift. If the majesty of the giver be considered, nothing that is given shall seem small and of no worth. For nothing is small which is given by the Most High God. Although he gives punishment and stripes, we should be thankful because whatever he allows is for our benefit. With all that said, I can make two guarantees to you today. First, your time on earth will end. And second, you will be remembered for something. Class of 2014, how do you want to be remembered? Answer that question now while your best years are ahead of you. I've shared with you about my priorities. What are your priorities? On what foundation will you build your future? What is your passion? What fires you up? What will you protect? How will you be remembered? You're on the brink of your greatest challenge yet. Don't take that step without a firm commitment to your priorities. In closing, this quote from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. A saint is not someone who never sins, but one who sins less and less frequently and gets up more and more quickly. The Catholic University of America, class of 2014, don't worry, be thankful, and nunc chepi. Congratulations and God bless all of you.